Hey guys, this is Daniel and welcome to the sixth part of the character rigging tutorial. This is where we left off. Um, I finished, you know, setting up the constraints and every single bone here in this new set of bones has a copy rotation constraint connected with the rigid bodies. So um, to make things a bit cleaner, I should have named them, I know, but um, I will do that later on because right now I don't want to spend the time with that. But anyways, I will move these bones to the second layer for now and press Alt H to unhide everything else. So now we have here our um, well the former bones and on this layer we have our controller bones. So this is how it works basically. In the first frame you can select the controller bone and just rotate it to you know position the hair strand in case you need it to be in a certain pose and then you can just go to the first frame again and press alt a to play the animation and you'll see that it just works the hair just drops from the pose that you place it in and no problems there uh, so the last thing that we need to do now is, of course, um, applying these these bones uh, with weights to our character. We have already many, you know, weights here for all these bones and everything, uh, but we need a few new groups for the hair. So I will go. I'll um, activate the layer with our armature. I can hide, you know, this deform mesh for now because that's a bit in a way, so I just want to see these um, bones. And if I right click on them, the whole object will just turn violet or pink or whatever. And as soon as you press, you know, with the draw tool, it will change blue and red, because this means you don't have a group, uh, the group does not exist yet, and later on you'll have the group. So how do you paint this exactly? And let me show you this uh, my technique that I like to use for it because it's not too hard at all to do this. I will change to stick mode first of all because that gives us a better view of the mold and the weights uh, like this. We also, let's see if we can live without x-ray maybe because it's again hard to tell uh, with that activated. We can still see, you know, just press on that. Maybe that's a bit difficult to see. So let's stick with x-ray after all. Uh, like this. So so let's say for example we want to start with um, this strand back here. We need to imagine first of all what, which parts we want to group. So I want this to be a group, then maybe this part here, and these two actually need to be one as well. So I select this first of all and I invert my selection so that everything other than my strand is selected. Then I go to weight paint mode and I start by um, selecting the draw tool, select weight one, select uh, this curve here that has a tip on the left side. Use a very large brush and you can also set the strength to 0.5 maybe. And what you want to do is you press on the lower end of the bone once or twice maybe. Uh, I forgot one more thing, let's undo that. Make sure that you uncheck this button here so that you can paint through everything. We really want to paint everything um, inside and outside in this hair mesh. Press this a couple of times until you get a very solid uh, weight on this entire strand in this area and you might want to zoom outwards a little bit so that you can really get this very soft gradient. And don't worry at all about uh, painting, you know, everything else. I just realized that we could have a... Um, no, never mind, sorry. So uh, once you have that, Go to edit mode and with that same group selected just press remove and when you go back to weight paint you see that only the strand is affected and 
so far everything is good. We can set, set that back to zero and start uh, reducing. Um, would you paint it too much over here? Just be careful not to overdo it. Uh, for some reason it really takes away a lot here right now. Is that the right tool? Let's see, draw. Um, maybe the problem is with Xmira. Apparently that was a bit of an issue here. So deact yeah, of course, deactivate Xmira. That's something we don't use in this situation. And now we don't have the problems anymore. Just, you know, fill the area that you're here worried with, worried about and and then move on with the next bone. We do the same thing again. Um, get this very even gradient. Maybe reduce it a bit towards the tip of the hair because this is where our last bone will affect the shape of, of you know the hair. And then in edit mode just press remove again so that only the strand is affected. And finally we want to have the tip for this strand weight painted. And again in edit mode remove it. So now we can see our first result. Uh, I still have the animation on it and if I play the animation it should work and you can see it um, I should go on to this layer is everything working correct um, let's find out so the physics appears to work I just wonder if I have the um, if I did not make a mistake here. Okay, but it doesn't look like it. So on the first layer, let's just see the result. <coughs> and I guess we can still work on the weights a little bit, but more or less that's the result that we get here. Oh, of course, now I get it. So one important thing that I always tend to forget is that this whole hair is still part of our group um, for the, you know, the head bone. So you really need to go to the deformer head uh, group and remove the entire, um, the entire hair from it. So only select the hair All the strands with all everything that's linked to the hair and remove it from head and now it should have a lot it's re it really sticks to the bones now and this is the result that we're looking for right it really has this wave motion in it now but on the other hand uh, you see how we need to really finish painting everything so that it really sticks to it and don't forget that the top will have to stick to the head bone because that's actually what we don't want to simulate. Uh, so I'll do one or two more strands to show you how this works but uh, from there on I will leave it again up to you to do this and be back with the final result. So let's do one more strand then. I'll go back to weight paint um, this time. You know this is a whole big part I need to select only the area that I'm interested in uh, which can sometimes be a little bit difficult but be patient and rotate the view a couple of times to really get the points that you're looking for so here is a, a good one for you if you need to select an area in a complicated object make a loop that separates you know the area that you're interested in from everything else just like what I'm trying to do here. Uh, there should be... Um, we'll need to concentrate to get it right. Somewhere around here we'll have the possibility to connect these two loops. Ah, uh, it's here. 
So, once you have that, yep, I got it. This is one closed loop now. Now you can press Control E and select loop inner region. And now everything that's inside the loop will be, um, you know, your selection. I will invert what I have here right now, and this will again be what I remove from the group. Actually, let's select these few words as well because um, I want to I want the spot only to affect this area and inside I'll also just add a couple of them here great so let's get back to work uh, we have again our selection, then you want to go through the very same um, through the very same steps that we did before. Do this until you get the red spot at the lower area of the bone. Make sure that you don't have too much weight on top because you really want to have the top of the head stick to where it stick to where it belongs. Move on. Um, of course, in edit mode, remove remove all the weight from that and we will also want to have lower weight on the bottom of it so also reduce that until you have this very smooth gradient here we'll do the same thing on the next one again very very smooth remove everything else and continue by reducing it on the lower side and then finally this one tip remove it from everything else and there we go so let's check our result in object mode uh, okay now what happened is that I forgot to uncheck this box because of this only the outer side was weight painted uh, which basically means I need to redo this step, but it was a good example for you to see what um, happens if you forget about this feature. Basically, everything outside was painted and on the inside we don't have any weight. So, um, yeah, just press this button and we'll do it again. Add some weight here. Let's start over. Let's just remove everything here and do it again. But you get, you know, the concept. This is how it should be done. And you'll get, you'll gain speed when doing it as well. So after a short time, it shouldn't be too much work to do this. <coughs> I'm doing this very quick now so that we can see a result. So give him a second to concentrate. Um, but that's pretty much it, really. Um, if you have this on your rig and for you, you know how to use these tools and you can apply that maybe to the clothes as well. You really have everything that you need for um, a very advanced character rig. And there we have it now. We can go to object mode and we can check out our result with textures maybe. And as soon as we have everything else weight painted as well as the head area, and you might also want to create separate, you know, physics strands for the front here. Uh, you get this perfect result where you have simulated hair with the character and um, as soon as I have that I'll be back with the finished result. So let's see. So I finished weight painting process and here's the result that I have. Um, we just saw these strands, I painted those for you. Um, but I did all the others as well now. So you can see every single bone here, if you click on it in weight paint mode, you can see it has a group assigned to it. And that also goes for the front 
of the hair. Um, here you go. You have the, those on the left and on the right side. Uh, the only thing that I did not show you how to do is here the hair in the front. We have for every strand here, I, I decided to go with three strands. I have a group for all of those and um, as for bones, we do not have a chain here, we just have a single bone um, and instead of a cube as a rigid body, I decided to go with a sphere because this sphere will have lots of mass on the lower end, which means that if she turns her head or something, it will give you a better result because the mass will be down here and it won't try to, you know, collide with everything along this whole length of the hair. Um, for me, this worked better, but uh, the concept is the very same. The whole technique behind it is the very same. So if you got this far, I'm very sure that you should be able to, to achieve this as well. Um, this tutorial has been long enough anyways, so I don't want to waste your time doing the same step over and over. So um, the only thing that I really should show you though is the groove for the, the head because um, we removed all the hair vertices from the head group, if you remember it just a few minutes ago. But now we had to, um, you know, again, apply some weight to it only in, in the top area where we do not have any any simulation going on so this is how my group looks what my group looks like we have of course the entire head selected and as for the hair we have most of this area that is you know right above the head and the gradient towards the areas that are um, well simulated so your results should also look something like this um, if you forget any vertex uh, to paint it at all or to give it at least some some connection to any group you'll notice that right away when you play the animation so with that said let's get right to it and let's play the animation so that you can see what the result looks like um, I disabled rendering for all my rigid bodies and colli collision objects and everything that's involved here so if I press only render everything will disappear that is not, um, you know, does not have this checked on, um, which is really useful here in this case. Um, the only thing you need to be careful with when simulating it, you need to have all layers selected. The rigid bodies need to be on your layer or else you might run into um, some collision issues. But other than that, it should work pretty well, and this is the result that I have. You can see every strand moves individually, and especially the front uh, is very fluid and and pretty good. I can also display the textures, and so far it's a very good result. It's extremely stable. You can really jump around with this character, and so far I think um, we did a pretty good job here. There is one more thing that I want to do and I want to show you quickly because to finish this rig off I would like to make it a bit more easier to animate. So one very useful feature in uh, rigs these days is IK, uh, that's what they call it in, in words kinematics. Uh, that's sort of the, the term that you use for the mechanism that allows you to um, to, for example, just move down the hip and the uh, legs will just, um, you know, adapt to wherever they are placed. So the whole leg just bends instead of, you know, going through the ground. And I'll quickly show you how you do that. We need a few new bones, first of all. Uh, I'm going to copy the, the knee bones here. Um, we'll just position them somewhere here. Um, I guess this works all right. I will snap them, or no, let's just leave them here. This will be our IK target, which uh, will allow us to control the rotation of the leg, like which direction is facing. Um, let's call it knee target for left and right side. And we'll need one more bone down here, which um, will be our controller, basically. So
So from this intersection point, we'll just in extrude backwards. That's probably not a bad idea. But the only difference is that uh, I want to press Alt P and to, to clear the parent so that it's a separate bone. And instead I will um, parent it to the root bone while keeping offset so that the root bone um, moves all of these, but this can actually move individually and the hip bone should not, you know, move our, um, let's call it just foot IK. Yes, so we have now these new bones. Also, um, we have the, the foot here, right? Um, so we want to, we want this bone to kind of be connected to that one. Um, so I guess we can do that with constraints quickly. Let me see. I'm going to try to use child off because if it works, that would be quite comfortable to use, but let's give it just a try. Uh, so I'm selecting this lower, like the foot bone here, and I give it a bone constraint. Make sure that you're in the bones constraint tab. Choose the type child off and select the correct bone, which is in this case, well, it's, it's actually not a deformer. We should change that to C because this is a controller bone and this is also a helper and not a control, well, a controller in some, in some way. So, Let's quickly change that. That makes it easier for us to find the bone in our drop down. <coughs> so, on the left side, here we have it. So, when you rotate this bone now on the back, your uh, foot will rotate as well, but it still does not move with our bone. So, we need to fix that. Therefore, select the shin, add another bone constraint, this time inverse kinematics. Our target will be. Um, our controller, I mean, of course, first of all, first of all, the rig, but then the bone uh, controller foot IK left, and the chain length will need to be t set to two so that um, it, you know, adapts the whole length from the hip to basically the ankle. And now, when you move it up, um, you get this nice transition between you know just bending the leg there's just one problem that we still have um it it kind of you know takes rotation which we don't usually want because that makes it harder to control so so i will go to the to the bone tab here and deselect inherit rotation and then we should get this result where you can control the leg uh the, the foot with this bone in every every way in rotation and transition so there's one last thing that we need to enable that is in the constraint again for the shin we need a pole target which is um, in our rig armature system the knee target <coughs> and when you do that oh by the way in edit mode we need to change um, you know the parent of of this target bone to um, to the root bone again. So select the, the, the target one and then the root one and then press Control P and keep offset. So that hap doesn't happen. Uh, but as you can see we have this problem where the, the lag twists and looks kind of in the wrong direction. I will fix that by using this pole angle value. Um, simple 90 you should fix that so now it faces directly you know um, the target that we set it to and when you go down yeah pretty much <coughs> you can control it now in every direction and animators usually should have a good time working with this you can really make this very complex and further work this out um, there are many tricks that you can do but uh, this is fine for us. Let's quickly do the same thing on the other side. I won't comment too much on it this time. I'll go through it work quickly. 
and the same thing is for the hands actually so I guess I won't go through that anymore but uh, let me concentrate for a second right side of course <coughs> so again we get the rotation that's bad so we will set the angle to 90 and the result is good let's only set this child of the other bone here um, does it work yes and of course disable inherent rotation so now we're done we can now move both legs and especially if interesting is when you move the hip because it just adapts the whole body to um, whatever whatever it needs to be so that you know the foots are the feet are always on the on the same position and you can always further adjust them with your targets so there you go this is our IK mechanism that we created to make animation easier um, hopefully you understood the technique behind it you can also apply that same one to you know the hand and and the lower arm of course with the same chain length of two it's exactly the same progress uh, process I mean but that's pretty much it um, with this you have a very advanced rig uh, the only thing I want to comment is in case you're interested in facial expressions because we're doing a blender internal only rig um, I recommend working with shape keys which means that in here you basically create a new shape key uh, and create another one and now you can edit something in your in your model for example we will for example we'll change you know this to, to a smile with proportional editing on <coughs> something like this here and now with this slider which you can animate you can change to the expression you could also, you know, edit the eye to be closed and have a slider to close the eye now instead. So there are many things that you can do with it and if you're looking into facial expressions, please take a look at that. I might do a tutorial someday, but it won't be part of this one. And finally, um, if you want to look at the, the, the model here, this character and the rig and everything, I'm, yeah, you can download this file on patreon.com it's for all of my supporters so if you're interested and if you think that this is something you can learn from feel free to take a look at the link in the description below um, so I guess that's it it was a very long tutorial two hours and a bit more but I really hope it was helpful to you that was the most important thing uh, to me that some people could know start animating their own characters and if you were able to do that I'm very glad so thank you for watching and see you next time <laughs>